I still tend to over C bet in these particular spots. I mean, Jack 10 4 still isn't the same as like Jack 10 9. And the reason why I adjust with, I'm talking about volume wise over sort of betting, not necessarily sizing, but just betting multi ways, just because. 5 1000 cap, okay. All right, and I don't know if this matters at all, but this is my very last hand, so I have my chips in the rack and everything. I'm gearing up to leave, and I'm under the gun. Um, and I open Ace of Hearts, Jack of Clubs to twenty. Okay. And how are you? How deep are you? Um, so we're eight fifteen effective with the small blind, who's going to be the main villain. Okay. Uh, but uh, five people or uh, four people end up calling this bet, so. Okay. Kind of a variety of effective stacks. I cover them all, but so you open a twenty, and then a few two people in the field call that have position on you, and the small blind calls. Is that right? Uh, so it's hijack, cutoff, button, and small blind. Oh, hi wow. Okay, hijack, cutoff, button. Wow, is that typical? Um, it's it was pretty atypical. Um, we were getting some multi-way pots, but that was that was out of the norm for this game. Okay, so four people call the pot to hundred bucks, right? Yep, and the the flop is Jack of Hearts, Ten of Diamonds, Five of Diamonds. Jack of Hearts, Ten of Diamonds, Five of Diamonds. You've got Ace Jack, and um, so top pair. But obviously, it's a very very ultra multi way board, right? Um, yeah. I still tend to over C bet in these particular spots. I mean, Jack 10 4 still isn't the same as like Jack 10 9. And the reason why I adjust with, I'm talking about volume wise over sort of betting, not necessarily sizing, but just betting multi way is just because people are playing way too wide. So, you know, it's interesting because. Again, looking at like a computer sort of simulation, if you were just to say, and I know this isn't reality. If you said, okay, I'm going to give the hijack, the cutoff, the button, the small blind. I'm going to give, give them the top 25% of hands, uh, however you define that, right? So would the top 25% hands with the way that it interacts with Jack-10-4, would Ace-Jack be ahead of those hands? It gets a little bit strange when people start to say, well, Ace-Jack only has 28%, 30% equity against like all, if you stuck in, you know, for callers with 25% of hands, like it only has 28% equity, that data in itself actually isn't all that useful because that will take into, I'm talking about probably not poker. I'm talking about what's the, the thing with the alligator, not poker snowy, but, uh, uh Flopzilla. Flopzilla. I have it on my computer. Yeah. 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 So uh, I think it's not even an alligator, I'm sure. But yeah. Uh, but, but like, that's taking into account like, okay, like the hijack having like nine, 10 of spades, like that's taking into account your hand against the entire field. But if you bet that hand's going to fold, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's, it's not, I, I still think you'd probably fair to have the best hand here, but I, I could see checking cause it's so multi-way. And again, like in theory, the theory goes, you don't really want to bet and fold a hand like this on the flop. You're supposed to take your in-between hands that you don't want to bet call raise with and check call them with them. But I Definitely feel strongly that in live, I would still be betting a fair amount. Yeah, that all makes sense. Yeah. And I was concerned about, you know, not, not being able to barrel a lot of turns or rivers just because there's a lot of bad ones. But so what happens here? Uh, so small blind checks, and I end uh -huh. up betting 65 into about 100 after rake. I mean, the other thing, too, is that you can have bluffs here, right? Like, you can have ace-king, you can have ace-queen, you can have king-queen. Like, if the board was, like, jack, you know, four-deuce, and you bet, like, 65% into, like, five people, I would start to say, like, the sizing is too large because, like, it, it allows people to play, like, very correctly, unless you're just crazy, Um you know, you know, if you're betting like 70% a pot into four ways and I'm next to act with like Jack 10, I, I might just fold to be honest with you, uh, yeah, on my Jack four deuce, but this is a little bit different cause you can have those upper end straight dress. Okay. So you bet 65. Yeah. And the cutoff and the small blind call. All right. So hi Jack folds, cut off and small blind call. 
So 195. So it's like 295. Yeah, just about. Okay. And uh, about 1300 deep with the cutoff. Not too relevant, but we're a lot deeper with him. Yep. Okay. And uh, so they both call the turn is the three of hearts. That's a pretty so big blind pretty, card. Yeah, pretty safe turn. Yep. Um, the small blind checks again. I bet 200 into about 300. And only the small blind calls. Here about 200. So you, you would like to see cutoff fold, right? Yeah, that was a good. Yeah. And small blind calls. So now we're, I'm going to say the pot's right around 700. This guy's put in 200 on the turn, 65. So he's got what, like, you have like 500-ish effective, something like that? Yeah. At, I think at the she, end? Yeah, she had like 525 on the Okay. River. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, she, she calls that. I thought that sizing was reasonable. If I had like any kind of diamond plus straight draw or anything I would want to bluff with, I'd probably... Also picks puts in the back door heart draw here too, right? Jack of hearts, 10 of diamonds, 5 of diamonds, 3 of hearts. So if you have structuring correctly too, you've got some back door. It's interesting to note uh, how, and I don't know the answer off the top of my head. I was just thinking about this randomly last night, how the... A, a turn blank card in this situation, like a low blank that's total blank, right? There aren't many total blanks here, right? I mean, probably mm -hmm. anything below maybe a six, right? That's offsuit. How does it affect things when the back door comes in? Like, how does it affect your sizing here? The fact that it's the three, say, like the deuce through four of hearts versus putting in the back door versus, say, like the deuce through four of clubs or spades. Because I feel like naturally, if you're structuring correctly, you would have more bluffs here, which would, I think, tend to allow you to bet with higher volume and maybe a larger sizing, which is good for your specific situation here with, with Ace Jack. Uh, all right, so 700 to the river, okay. All right, and the river is the 10 of clubs. So that seems like a pretty big blank card. I mean, she's closing the action. She's closing the action on the flop, and she also calls the turn. Jack of hearts, 10 of diamonds, five of diamonds, turns to three of hearts, rivers the 10 of clubs. She overcalled one person on the flop. She called 200 again on the turn. So she either has a missed draw or Jack X here. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, this is, this is good stuff. I would think. Yeah, that was, that was kind of my thinking. I was running through my head, just making sure I wanted to use this as a value bet jam on the river. And uh, while I was thinking about it, she went ahead and went all in for 525. She bets all in for 525? Yeah, so she led jammed. I mean, wow, that's that's interesting. Um, again, looking back at, obviously looking back at, um, looking at small stakes and just realizing that, you know, these are under bluff spots. You certainly look strong. Here's the thing that's concerning, and I'm not saying that I would fold. I'm just saying here are the things that I start to get concerned about is the fact that you've looked extremely strong by betting into four people and uh, also betting again on the turn, right? Jack 10, five, three, yeah. where like, I mean, I guess once in a while, like I said, you could have that backdoor bluff that misses, but the, I, I think I just chalked this one up to like, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, when it doesn't make sense to me here, I think I have to call the 10, it contains the front door suit. So it's 10 of hearts, excuse me, jack of hearts, 10 of diamonds, five of diamonds, three of hearts. So it's not like she can have 10 X with the front door. Now, could she have 10 X of hearts? Yes, that's possible. She's not really supposed to, but what are you going to do? You know, it's two five. And, why, and the reason why is because that's not supposed to be an over defense. So this is all goes back to hand reading on the flop. The cutoff calls, like she's not supposed to have 10 nine of hearts there. She's not with, with an overcall on the flop. But I mean, sometimes people, you know, kind of tend to break that. So the only way that I see this being like 10 X would be a sort of a, a very loose overcall on the flop with 10 X of hearts, because how is she continuing on the turn? I mean, unless she's just terrible and she doesn't have 10 X of hearts, it's just like random 10 X. Uh, and then she just up front jams it you know, sort of obviously at the end. So uh, if she had checked to you, I certainly would have value bet for sure. 
I just, I don't know. I mean, when it doesn't make sense, I call. This would be a gigantic deviation to fold here. I mean, on paper, this has to be a call. The line just, it just doesn't make any sense with the hand reading. Yeah, I was kind of thinking along the same lines as you. I was, I mean, really, it's a great hand to call. And like, like you said, it didn't make a whole lot of sense at the time. I was thinking through all that stuff. But, uh, you know, I love watching your videos, but all the underbet river, you know, people don't bluff very often. I really see that a lot when I play, especially at the MGM National Harbor. So oh, by the way, before, the other thing, too, is, is that what about any type of thick? Could there be thick value here? Thick value, and what I mean by thick value is, like, say, pocket fives for a full house. Pocket tens that wasn't, like, three bet off. Jack ten. And what I would say about that is, is that that would be very, very strange. Again, going back to the overcall on a wet board on the flop. Just check call on turn. And then the upfront all in on the river. Like, you take those three things. Like, if you give her pocket fives, what are the chances that she check over calls on the flop? Let's say she likes the slow play, so it's like 70%, okay? 70% of the time. Then what are the chances that she only check calls on the turn when all the nuts are going to change? It's jack 10, 5, 3, which means there's two flush draws out there. Something If the board doesn't pair, the nuts are changing to a straight. That's the, the st distribution. So check over call on flop, 70%. Just check call turn. Let's say she does it another... 50% of the time. I think it's lower than that, right? Now you're down to 35%. And then she takes that line and follows up with an upfront all river jam. You know, even if you were to say that's another 50%. Now you're looking at like 15 to 20% of the time with a thick value hand would be played this way. I think it's far less than that. But that's how I would do it necessarily in my head. So I tend to dismiss uh, super thick value in this spot because of the texture and the super multi-way nature uh, of the board. So sorry to cut you off. What it what, what ended up happening? Uh, yeah. So that all that all makes sense. And I did end up calling uh, after a little bit. Uh huh. And, uh, she showed King Jack with the King of Hearts. King Jack with the King of Hearts. Yeah, I thought that was very strange. This is why, like I said, like you can't when when things don't make sense. You know, I tend to call. And uh, wow, that is very that is a hand that i would never expect that that makes absolutely no sense did she like obviously she thinks she's bluffing here or something yeah you know i kind of asked myself the same question i i assume so i look like a ton of over pairs and I, I look really strong there so i would assume she knows king jack is no good i mean that's such a dumb you know speaking from you know having a bluff catcher from her perspective and having strong somewhat strong hands this would be like, if you wanted to play this out at showdown, it's a check call, right? With King Jack. Why would you ever, if you're bluffing, right? We talked about how the board is too flushed in the front and the back, right? With hearts and diamonds. And then the straight draws up top, right? Mm -hmm. And so let's say that like you're running like a triple barrel somehow. You know, you've got, you know, uh, King Queen of Hearts. Well, she's got the King of Hearts, but whatever it is, like Ace Queen of Hearts or some bullshit like that, Right. Uh, whatever, some hand, right, that you're going to run, or like ace four of hearts, it turns a wheel, draw on the turn. Like, you don't want to bet here with king jack, and then you're just going to fold, especially if it's all in. Because if you have a bluff, you just fold, right? I mean, it's so bizarre. Um, that this should that should never be played that way. Uh, slightly, like, other thing too is, is that like, is it slightly better for you to have a jack in your hand than, say like, pocket well i was gonna say like is it slightly better to have your jack in the hand than like pocket queens pocket kings slightly better from the sense that it blocks her having like jack 10 slightly worse in the fact that if she has missed draws you're blocking them with like king queen so uh you know it's it's debatable but uh, yeah. i think i would have called here too i just don't think she has the thick value as played and unless she's you know making some sloppy calls uh, with the 10x of hearts, then, you know, it is what it is.